Richard Simmons is doing a fantastic job to help obese adults move and reclaim their bodies. But it's our overweight children we need to worry about. This generation is the first in a hundred years to have a shorter predicted lifespan than their parents, and the reasons are scary. There's been an explosion in Osborne obesity, probably related to two factors mainly. The availability, the cheap availability of um, a sweetener called high fructose corn syrup, yeah. um, and uh, a fat called palm oil, um, both of which contribute to the uh, ability of fast food manufacturers to make food that will last on the shelves for a long time and be very inexpensive. The way high fructose corn syrup seems to work is it causes the deposition of fat. So every, every bit of carbohydrate that you take in mm. can go automatically to fat storage. And right. that's why we're seeing these problems of fatty liver. And it goes straight to the liver. Strong. Exactly. There is this um, model of the Paragord goose who is fed, force-fed cornmeal. And what happens is that as they're force-fed this cornmeal mush, their livers get bigger and bigger and bigger, mm. and, and then the next thing we see is uh, foie gras. Mm. Well, it turns out that we're probably doing the same thing to children. We're giving them high fructose corn syrup. Mm. They're drinking huge amounts of it. And in the very beginning, about three or four years ago, I would be working up all of these children for some rare and exotic form of hepatitis. Mm. Well, it turns out what they're getting is fatty liver, just like the Paragord goose. And we have animal rights activists that are talking about the paracord goose, and we're not doing it. We've got child pate. Exactly. Kids can and do drink loads of soda here. It's really cheap. It's cheap because one of the main ingredients, the high fructose corn syrup that Naomi was talking about, comes from homegrown corn and doesn't have to be imported. It's damaging children's livers. It's contributing to childhood obesity and diabetes. But it's cheap. Naomi has founded Kids Shape, a program for overweight children. The weekly sessions look at exercise, nutrition, healthy choices, and the children discuss more subtle aspects of the problem, like what makes us overeat in the first place. A lot of times, you kind of get that empty feeling, that sad feeling inside. We come home, we've had a bad day at school. Where's the first place we usually go if we come home and we've had a bad day at school? Yeah. Yeah. These are lovely, intelligent children. They're not spoilt or greedy. We've built them a world full of horrible substances and damaging habits, and all they've done is live in it. What had you thought before you came, that you that you ate all right? Did you feel that you were healthy? No. You didn't? Because um, there's like a jack-in-the-box right where I get off my bus, oh, it's and locked. it's like a fast food place. Yeah. And so we would always go drive through, and then like after a while, I start seeing that I was gaining a lot of weight. And you got heavier, did you? Did you feel bad about it? Well, not really, but then, like, I started noticing that my clothes weren't fit, really. Mm. And then we had to go shopping, but I liked that part and stuff. <laughs> but then when I, I didn't like trying on the clothes because I didn't look good in them. And then I kind of wanted to lose weight. So when you look at skinny models and skinny actresses on the television, you don't think, oh, I want to look like that? No, because they're unhealthy. Because they, like, my mom tells me, like, the people in the magazines and stuff, they're not normal. No, they're, they're um... And everyone wants to look like them and make they think that they're normal but and that we're different because we're a little heavier than them, but they're the ones not normal because they do different stuff to their bodies that's not good for them. You know, you should have your own television show. You should tell everybody. It's brilliant. Now did you ever watch ER? Do you remember the big nurse? No, not the man with the little beard, the big lady. Well, this is her, Yvette Freeman. She was really heavy and she lost nine stone on a radical obesity program run by the University of Los Angeles. I wonder if she ever handed an elastoplast to George Clooney. For people who don't know, can you just tell me what you weighed before? I had gone all the way up to like 268 pounds. So before you started the program, were you a happy, happy big person? I was a big person in denial. I was a successful big person. Mm. I had everything. Mm. I got a show, ER. I yeah. was overweight. Yeah. It's a hit TV series. Mm. Um, I got a couple other TV series. Mm. Uh, I sing, I dance, I have a husband. Mm. I'm a successful large woman, mm. you know. Mm. And um, some of those things are not supposed to happen to you because you're big. Mm. But they did. So, but I was, why I lost the weight was because my health was in jeopardy.
So you knew about the UCLA program already. Mm -hmm. So you did the you did the most extreme mm -hmm. version mm -hmm. of what they offer, which yeah. is seven shakes and zilch, nothing else. Nothing else. Right. I did this from November, I think the twenty third to July the fourth. And you're still married. That's very good. My husband, thank God for the support that he gave me. This is him. He's lovely, isn't he? Which one are you going to give me? I'm giving you. That's the real cappuccino. Cappuccino. So this is all Yvette had for nine months. Seven of these shakes every day. Unfortunately, there's one left over with my name on it. You can see that on the package. Yeah. It's quite sugary though, isn't it? Ah, uh, no, it's no sugar. Corn syrup though. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's sugar. Yeah, it is sugar, isn't it? It is. But it's only 100 <laughs> calories worth, so it can't be that much. No, no, I suppose not. It comes quite high up on the whole list, but... Yeah. Well, you know what? It's got to taste good. If it doesn't taste good, you might want to have it. Yeah, yeah. sure, okay. I wonder how many blenders she got through. That should do it. Okay. I'm going to get all the ice out of there. That's, that's all right. right. I can set that up through the straw. Good stuff. Let me try that. <laughs> oh, it's got a lot of ice in it. Thank you. <laughs> and and just uh, think about putting more ice in it. It'll yeah. be nice and thick like a little mm. shake. Yeah. And they have it in chocolate. Some people don't like it. Mm. You know, but it, it it's I dealt with it. I'm just happy to be healthy. Key. Healthy. This is the most important thing to me. I don't want to die young because I did it to myself. Yeah, you want to get run over or something good like that. Or well, just regular that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, regular stuff. You know? Yeah. Not because I kept stuff in my mouth. Well, I have to say, halfway through that shake, I was screaming with boredom. Nine months of it, I would have killed somebody. Has that given you a different attitude to food? Oh, to yeah. what you had before? Yeah, I, I respect food. Right. You have for to what respect. it can do. For what it can do. Food is a drug, and and that's how I'm dealing with it now, as if I am a, an alcoholic or a drug yeah. addict. And that's for the rest of my life, because my little fat cells, they like being fat and filled mm. up. Yeah, <laughs> I only just found that you'd never lose a fat cell. Once yeah, you've got one, it's just, it's there waiting, isn't it? Hoping, yeah. hoping for some fat to arrive, <laughs> and it'll yeah. pop up. Yeah, it's kind of scary. It <laughs> is scary. <laughs> Lovely people. Scary diet, but it worked for her. But suppose you're so heavy you're going to die, but you just can't do another diet. There is another option. It's drastic and it's dangerous and it's not for the squeamish. Hello, I'm Carly Wilson. You're about to view moments from one of the most important days of my life. On August 10th, 1999, I underwent laparoscopic gastric bypass surgery. After a life Carney Wilson is the pop singer daughter of Beach Boy Brian Wilson. She sang in 80s girl band Wilson Phillips. She was always big, but very pretty and very successful. But when her weight got so out of control, she could barely walk or sleep. She opted for surgery. A gastric bypass is a major operation and it's risky. One in 200 patients dies as a result of the operation. It's an irreversible procedure that makes the opening into the stomach so small that you can then only eat a very tiny amount of food at a time. Carney has become a sort of poster girl for this operation as hers was performed live on the internet. Well, it's her on the table, but it's somebody else in the close-ups. A sort of colon stunt double. Five weeks have passed since the operation and I feel amazing. I've lost 40 pounds so far and I have a total newfound energy. But apart from the physical results that will be even more dramatic as the months go by, I feel like I've begun a whole new life of unlimited opportunity. It is an extreme thing to do. It's also much worse to stay as heavy as I was. And that was, what was my alternative? You know, that's what I kept thinking. You know, I'm about to start my diabetes medication. Um, my liver is toxic. I have chronic headaches. My cholesterol is high. My joints are hurting. Um, I'm falling down. I, you know, I, I've got sleep apnea. I can't breathe when I sleep. I was falling apart. And yes, you know, I mean, the people they say the people like from Napa, the National Association for Fat Acceptance, they're like, you mutilate your bodies, and what if you just be proud that you're fat, you'd be much happier. And dead. Hello. I mean, that's that's what I don't get. You know, you could be healthy to a certain point. But your body, we're not meant to be that big. 
So I just surrendered and I said, you know what? I can't do this on my own. I need help and I'm gonna be a good girl and follow the rules and make this the best thing ever. When you were having your hit records with Wilson and Phillips and you were very, very glamorous and big and you were very, very successful, were you torn between wanting to say to people, there's absolutely nothing wrong with being like this, and wanting to say, I really hate it? It wasn't easy to be standing next to them. I mean, I was, you know, obviously a, a lot bigger, and and but I really feel lucky because I think that because I had a positive attitude um, until a certain point when I became so obese that I couldn't live my life anymore. When Carney had lost all her weight, she posed naked for Playboy magazine. Quite a bold move for someone embarked at showing their colon. I'm very very proud. I loved it. I loved it so much. I had the best time. What woman wouldn't want to have beautiful pictures taken of her? Did that mark a change for you? That you had you had gone from being so big to being naked in a magazine that's full of girls who look like this? Yeah, it's actually very surreal and I still can't believe it. And I just take it out and look at it and go, I really cannot believe this. It's cool. It feels great. It really, really feels good. Suppose you never have that click, that moment where it's possible to take action and lose the weight. What are we supposed to do? We can judge ourselves harshly and allow others to judge us, or we can accept ourselves. We can take back the rights we took away from ourselves as a punishment for being heavy. The right to have fun, the right to have sex, the right to wear nice underwear, the right to paint our toenails. Lovely. <laughs> Now this is not Stockport and I'm not sitting in someone's old coal bunker. I'm relaxing LA style with Debbie and Dana. You right. stopped dieting and you started belly dancing. What, started what did belly you dancing. Did um, that make you feel good? I did. It was wonderful. Did that reattach you to your body? It did. Mm -hmm. and, and I just became okay with how big I was. <laughs> the belly dancing, you get up there. Well, people are so shocked because you're this big woman and they're like dancing and you got coins and you're shaking and everything. And but you can't be belly dancing with no belly, can you really? What do you think? <laughs> people are just so shocked. Oh my god, that belly dancer has a belly. <laughs> Of home, mm -hmm. and it was my friend, and it also made me big enough so that men wouldn't try to hurt me. I met a guy about seven years ago that had never had a heavy girlfriend or anything, but he just we just clicked, and he was the first person that ever told me I was beautiful and sexy. I was 46 then. Okay, I'm somebody's perfect idea of perfection, and I'm other people's not, and that's cool because that's, okay. that's what makes yeah. the world go round. Yeah. So then you can lose that self hate. I mean, the Butterfly yeah. Lounge really changed my life, totally. This is the Butterfly Lounge, which is a size acceptance club. Right? The women who come here are mainly pretty big, but this is not about celebrating obesity. It's more that they're allowing themselves to be ordinary and have a good time. These big women would prefer not to be so big, but when you still get pretty big, when you sicken of the energy it takes to try and change your body, or when life has inflicted damage and it shows up as fat, then there's a peacefulness about accepting where you are. The celebration comes when you decide to embrace your life as it is and stop wasting any more of your life. It's about going to a club and being accepted for who you are and not worrying about your size. Most of the clubs you go into, most women are a smaller size, three to six. And a lot of women goes in there and feels uncomfortable being in the club. So I created a club that everybody can go into no matter what size you are and still have a good time. What's your percentage of women to men? Pretty 50-50 here, really. Oh, it started out more women than men, but then the men found out we were here, and now there's more men coming in. So the, are these men in particular like big women? Yeah, like big Is it me or she look creepy? So the past 
from a person, apart from an overweight person that feels guilt or shame or has low self-esteem because of their weight, that would be helped. Yeah, our people that come in here at the very beginning, they, they sit in the corner and are really quiet and don't talk to anybody. Two weeks later, they're walking around in lingerie, having a great time, dating five or six different people. And I feel like I'm trying to change their life because I'm telling them it's okay to be who you are, accept who you are, and you can still be sexy, you can still be sexual. Suppose I don't have your I don't have your good looks, I don't have your personality. <laughs> you like you. I'm I'm huge and I'm shy and I'm lonely and there's no way I'm gonna go out and exercise. I can't stop eating. I don't believe in diets. What 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 would I do? What can I do? There's a huge group on the internet. There's a huge community on the internet of, of people who are okay with their weight and find people who are accepting of you. Limit your amount of time, people who are self hating or who hate what is about you that mm -hmm. makes you heavy. Mm -hmm. People who are who are focused on your on your weight, limit your time with them, even if it's family. Right. And okay. don't be around them. And mm -hmm. so find and uh, if you're out, you have internet access, you can find people on the internet who men who will adore you, any size you are. You could be any size of super, mm -hmm. all the way up to five hundred pounds. I have a friend who's five hundred pounds and she dates more than I do. Millionaires, corn syrup, hot tubs, 500 pound women, gastric bypasses. I've only been here since Tuesday. I need to go home. And look, here we are. There's a London bus. There's Trafalgar Square. There's the River Thames and the bridge I can't remember the name of. And what's heading over to dear old Blighty from America? Yes, it's their obesity crisis. They haven't finished with it, but we're getting it anyway. Just slower and with less mustard. This may not be LA with its hot tubs and size acceptance, but I'm on my way to a course called Beyond Chocolate, which is about forming new patterns of behaviour around binge foods and particularly chocolate. So, so mm, a lot of women apparently prefer chocolate to sex. So if you're one of them, look away now. It might look like we've been called in to talk about voluntary redundancy, but let's stick with it. I'm going to start by um, briefly outlining the point of Young Chocolate while you're here. You probably all have very different reasons. We're not an easy crowd, are we? All our suspicious little faces. In America, we'd all be crying and hugging by now. But what Beyond Chocolate is really about is giving you the opportunity to explore your relationship with food. If you did prefer chocolate to sex, then this would be like a very expensive and summer's party. Just hold it in your hand and just have a look. And just notice what thoughts immediately pop into your head. We're supposed to be really focusing on the experience of eating and the feeling of food in our mouth, but we're not really flinging ourselves into this. There's a certain amount of resistance, or is it hostility? And really focus on the sensations of eating this chocolate. I was interested in what it provoked to me. It made me feel quite angry, actually, because it felt almost simplistic that touching something or tasting something was an answer. We're going to be eating this course of the meal with chopsticks. Oh, not chopsticks. What else is looming up? Spitting the bill when one of us has only had a salad. this meal in silence so that we can really... <sighs> eating in silence I can do. My family always ate in silence. Well, there'd be a row first. I'm not really comfortable at the table unless there's a door slamming and the sound of distant sobbing. It shot us again, feel from the airwaves, look away, look away! Pudding? Hey! Now oh. this is where the behaviour repatterning comes in. Oh, Snickers, that'd be a multiple orgasm for some people. This is to see what happens when you allow yourself to have as much as you like of a food you have trouble with, your forbidden naughty binge food. It's quite hard for people to be honest about what they'll stuff their faces with in private. And I certainly haven't told the truth about my binge foods. I've just picked a couple of things that sounded plausible. And I'd really love one of your brownies that tried to dip into my cream. Thank you. To dip into your cream? Are you mad? I thought you were going to have a spin taste. Okay. Okay. Oh, who chose Haribo? I can see that chocolate might be better than sex to some people. But what does that make Haribo? Readers' wives? 
we're all on our best behaviour here. What's the betting we're all going to rush home and eat cake mix? Mm. This is a cheese flavoured potato snack. It contains potato starch, vegetable oil, cheese flavour, and animal, oh, animal, I can't know, it's animal rennet. That. Oh, that's oh, it. Did you not know that? No. I'm too old to read the label usually. I had to really yeah. concentrate to focus on it. Well, I don't think they used to have animal rennet. Mm. I think it's a new one. Oh well, that's it then. Stuffy Brown is not strange. I don't have craisins again. You come away with anything with like a new look and more thing. Yeah, I mean I think I'd already realised it anyway, but probably to stop eating when I don't taste things anymore. Which you did. Yeah. yeah. How many tubs did you get through? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to go on a diet, I'm just afraid I won't be able to just nip out for a pizza. I'm on the food combining diet, but I can have pizza as long as I have the crust six hours after I have the topping. I went on an intensive eating behaviour weekend and I can have pizza anytime I like. Yeah. So long as I chew each mouthful 56 times, eat it in silence by candlelight and confront my mother over her refusal to breastfeed. You have much pizza? No. I'm about to have my face analysed, which doesn't mean you run in and they go, you've got a double chin and you run out again. Your face apparently can show up nutritional deficiencies. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've got a wicked sweet tooth. Mm. I knew I should be taking that gobstopper out. So we're going to have to do something about that. Mm. Do you eat bananas? Yes, I do. And I'm going to say stop that because they don't like you either, I'm afraid. They do they like me. Bananas do me. like me. They're my friends. Yes. So when, when I first looked at you, I did see a little problem with your digestion. Mm. And it's probably because those, those bananas with you, unfortunately, not with everybody, but with you, they don't digest correctly. Yeah. This yeah. woman is lovely and sincere, and she has celebrity clients queuing up. But when you're desperate about your weight and hating yourself, then it's very tempting to look to someone else to come up with a solution. And if that turns out not to be the answer, and you have the money, you could try another expert, another clinic, another sympathetic listener. Because when you're struggling, you're vulnerable. You'll try anything. You'll buy anything. I just count calories. I could eat anywhere as long as I have my scale, my calculator, my calorie book, and some way of keeping people awake at the table. I'm on the Atkins. I can eat anywhere as long as no one minds my breath tarnishing the cutlery. I'm on Slim Fast. I can eat in any restaurant. Well, I can eat outside any restaurant. I'm on the cabbage soup diet, and I'm not really this tall. I wonder if searching for the product or the diet or the gadget that'll do it for you doesn't actually distract you from sitting with yourself and trying to see where the real problem lies, what's making you overeat in the first place. I mean, if you eat to distract yourself from uncomfortable feelings, nothing you buy will help you realise that or face up to it. On the other hand, I know this is going to work for me. Only kidding. The key to becoming slim, fit and happy is to realise that losing weight is actually gaining health. Now, let me tell you about hypnosis. As you watch these... Well, at least it's cheap and you get to rely down. Relax your unconscious mind will absorb all the suggestions and strategies of weight loss. Now this is unusual for me in that I'm just lying here and not doing anything else. I'm not reading, I'm not chewing my fingers, I'm not making all my coat hangers face the same way. So if you eat because you're stressed or anxious, this might do you a bit of good. As you continue, I'd like you to visualise yourself at your ideal body weight. Trim, fit and healthy as you come out of trance. You'll lock into your new slim health. Oh, was I hypnotized then? Waking up now. I actually find that hypnosis video very relaxing, and I think a lot of people who eat to calm their nerves would find it very soothing. I mean, I don't think it actually hypnotizes people, I and mean, I don't think that matters because I think just to drift off to a bit of encouragement would do it for most people. I don't think I've changed my eating habits since I saw it, so I don't know if it works subliminally. Though I do know every time I see an ambulance, I whistle Colonel Bogey. I'm fat. Are you? But I'm also very rich. So I've had my face analysed, my blood analysed, my toenails tested, 
and my metabolism blessed by Tibetan well wishes. And are you still fat? Still fat, not quite so rich. I plunged into this documentary fueled by a mixture of annoyance and sadness and frustration. I was sad not because I struggled with an eating disorder, but that I'd been so hard on myself about it. I was sad not that I'd been fat, but that I'd let it limit my life. And I was frustrated to think that like 35 years after I first went on the diet, it was all still going on, all that anxiety and money and worry. And it's been really painful to talk to people and see how harshly they judge themselves and how much they hate bits of their bodies. One girl said to me she wished she could take a cheese grater to her thighs and I wanted to say, but you're lovely. Who are you judging yourself against? Some airbrush photo. Another woman said that when she over it, she felt disgusted with herself. Well, when you're mean and spiteful, that's the time to be disgusted with yourself, not just because you've eaten a peanut butter sandwich standing up. It's been no surprise to learn that it's snacking and sedentary habits that have helped make us bigger. You know, we should all be running up the stairs, getting off the bus and stop early. Well, people can choose to do that or not. But the people I worry about are the ones who judge themselves by their weight, the ones whose first waking thought is centered on what they're not allowed to eat. But if those are your horizons, you might as well get off your life to stop early. And I was very suspicious before I went to LA of the happy fatty, you know, oh, God meant us to be this big, that's why he invented Elastic Brigade. But once I'd met them, my preconceptions were blown out of the water. They're not happy because they're fat. They're fat because their lives have damaged them and they've taken a decision not to waste any more energy on changing their bodies, but put it into enjoying themselves. And that's what I brought back from America. That's what I would like to pass on. All that energy, all that confidence, that affirmation that we are okay, we do deserve to be here. That's what you need when you're down on yourself, not some calorie counting junk or a tape measure. I'm not saying people shouldn't lose weight if they want to do this. I mean, I've seen women in LA who were so big they could barely stand and they were working out with weights. What I'm saying is, find out about yourself first. You decide. Don't just leap into dieting because you've seen some clever commercial or because of a celebrity or because of a diet. You have to be able to face yourself in the mirror. So if you think you're all right, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. If you're happy with your floorboards, they can't flog you a carpet. And if life deals you a pile of manure, they say you should grow roses. So I say, if life gives you a belly, go dancing. Turn it down. No, I mean it. Turn the singing down, because it's awful. Look, I'm sorry, what can I say? They gave me some terrible cocktail and with it being a size acceptance club, it was massive. Love all keepers together was the only tune I know. It's obviously my key. Dogs were coming from miles around and it took it, I just need to accept myself and move on.